Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and all the ships at sea. Welcome to tonight's Wampa Media Corporation Friday, November 3rd, 2023 broadcast of Walpole High School Varsity Football. My name is Rick Brown, the voice of Walpole High Sports. I'll be calling all the action for the John Lee Press Box high above John Turco Field as your Walpole High Timberwolves host the Harbormen of Hingham High in a first round action of the MIAA Division III playoffs. Joining me with all his knowledgeable commentary is my friend and co-host, Mike Hardeman. Mike, big game tonight. Absolutely. It's the beginning of playoff season. The weather's changed. It's cold. Uh, you know, you can kind of feel playoffs in the air, I guess. So looking forward to round one here in the Division Three uh, state playoffs. Yeah, see Walpole get off on the right foot. Uh, let's see, Walpole will be trying to make it five straight wins and gain some revenge against the Harbormen. Hingham has won the last two meetings of these two teams, 14-8 in 2019 and 30-18 to 18 the year before that, both in uh, the MIA playoffs. Walpole's most recent win over Hingham was a 41-21 count in 2013. Coach Chris Sullivan's squad comes in as the fourth seed while Hingham is in the 11th slot. Tonight's winner will meet the victor of the Mansfield Westboro contest next weekend in the state quarterfinals. A Walpole would win, would have the game being played here at Turco Field. Walpole's record is somewhat deceiving as the Timberwolves have only played one Division III team, rolling over previously unbeaten Milton 42-23. The remainder of the games they have played have all been against D1 or D2 teams, and it has shown as the season has progressed. After being blanked by D2 powerhouse undefeated King Philip 31-0 in the season opener, Walpole dropped a 14-7 count at Natick in which a costly penalty after a blocked field goal attempt by the Red Hawks turned into the winning touchdown. After a 30-14 victory over Wellesley, a late first half implosion led to a 21-19 loss to 7-1 Needham. This loss, however, started to turn around the season as the Orange and Blue was run off a quartet of decisive victories over Shrewsbury, 31-6, the previously undefeated Milton, uh, Braintree 37-3 and Rochester, Wachusett Regional 45-13 last week. With an overall 5-3 record, the T-Wolves are 2-1, tied for second in the Hergut Division of the Bay State Conference. Outscoring their opponents by a 28-16 mark, Walpole brings a 4-0 mark into Turco Field. <clears throat> Senior Jamal Abdal Kalak, Walpole's wideout kickoff and punt returner extraordinaire, leads the team with a dozen end zone romps for 72 points, tied for fourth in the division. Jamal's nine TD receptions are good enough for second in D3. Abdal Kalak has two kickoff return touchdowns of 92 yards against Natick and 80 yards last week against Wachusett. Logan Keyes, another senior, has found the end zone seven times for 42 points, while kicking specialist Nick Foynes has converted 25 of 28 point after attempts, as well as a perfect four of four for field goal tries for 37 points. Kamari Hughes, another senior, has tallied a half dozen end zone rubs for 36 points, with five coming on pass receptions. <coughs> Junior quarterback Noah McKenzie's 18 TD passes are third best in Division Three. Also finding the end zone for Walpole have been uh, Noah McKenzie with two touchdown trots and one each for John Dayer and Matt St. Cyr. Uh, Mike, uh, <coughs> did you happen to see who won the coin toss? I did not. I was <laughs> listening to your pregame uh, recap here. So. All right, we'll get ready for the playing of the national anthem by the Walpole High pep band. Stands still pretty empty over there. So if you're thinking of coming down, folks, there's plenty of seats here.
Right off the plate on the next play, but we will be getting way underway very shortly here. Hey, point of note there, as you were reading, uh, I noticed Mike Frederick stressed tonight, Captain Mike Frederick. He's missed almost the whole season. Right. Be curious to see how they plug him back into the lineup. I was watching, uh, you know, the offense warm up. He wasn't on the what I see, saw of the starting offensive line, but, you know, maybe with that injury, they're going to be using him in in certain spots, most notably maybe the defensive line. But uh, what a great, what a great, uh, you know, thing for Walpole to have one of their captains back, big Mike Frederick. Right. So Walpole will be kicking off going right to left on your screen. Back deep <coughs> for the Haberman. Uh, number three, Matt Morell. And number 20, Will St. Pierre. Nick Foynes will tee it up and kick it off for Walpole. Funny thing down here uh, closest to us, the two Needham brothers right next to each other. Kevin and Dylan. Goes down to the seven. Picked up at the seven by Morrell. Who gets it up to about the 17-yard uh, line, maybe. No, the 20, I'm sorry, the 20-yard line. Gosh, I, I saw the number four. It's hard to see across the field, so I don't know who made that tackle. My apologies. Okay, it does. Yeah, it is at about the 17-yard line. All right, I see Mike Frederick in there at the inside at the defensive tackle spot. That'll be big for Walpole. Right. Him and McCabe on the inside is a formidable twosome. to St. Pierre, going around the left side. <coughs> yeah, looks like he picked up about four, oh, three. Yeah, so we got that uh, Aiden Abedi uh, at left defensive end, McCabe and Frederick in the middle. Of course, Reynard and Shamoon uh, at inside linebacker spots. Looks like Quinn McNeil is playing up, but I've seen him at uh, deep safety in past weeks. Number 10, Cash Cantrell at corner. I'm sure Keyes is on the other side out there. Logan Keyes, number 18, and Kevin Needham, an outside linebacker. Second and about seven for Hingham. <coughs> Danny Cesario, sorry, was the other outside linebacker, number eight. Back to pass, the first one of the game wide open. And it went through his hands and out. Yeah, he had him. You know, it was interesting, that number 16, the intended receiver there, uh, his name is, my apologies, um, Chase Bagley. Bagley. He went out with the captains, and he's listed as a sophomore. Wow. So that's pretty impressive. Yeah. The quarterback is Jake Vahalak. 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 Let's go with Vahalak. And he's only a sophomore, too. Yeah, a little young there, huh? Yeah. Third down and about seven and a half, eight yards to go for Hingham. <clears throat> uh, first series of the game. Back to pass again, being chased. Gets it off downfield. Got it. He got it. And brought down at the Walpole 40. That's the sophomore captain there, Bailey. Yeah, uh, the, the, the Wapple coverage there was just uh, getting turned a little bit. and Just at the last minute, he uh, turned over the wrong shoulder. And Bailey, good job by him. He was keeping his eye on the ball the whole way. And uh, Hingham gets a long connection. And they got first and 10 at the Wapple 40-yard line here on their first drive early in the right, first. Pick up a 40 on that yard, on that play. Abadi had a lot of pressure. But the Walpole, I mean, the Hinton quarterback made a good play stepping up on that and, and completing that pass. Hand off, trying to get around. Picks up a couple of yards, maybe. That was the same. Bright, brightly, brightly. Uh, Bailey. Bailey, yeah. yeah. Quinn McNeil coming up from the uh, strong safety position with a good tackle. This has been, I've been saying it a couple times, 
a really good tackling team, I think, Walpole has been uh, on the most part all year. But, uh, yeah, I noticed 16 was a captain. I looked down. He's yeah. a sophomore. And he's, Interesting. He's been a, a, a target or run the ball at least three or four times already. Second down, second down. A lot of movement on the Walpole defense, trying to get there, trying to get it straight. The whole look back to pass again, looking over on the left side, and out of bounds, throws it out of bounds. It'll be third. <clears throat> yeah, Bailey was the intended target uh, again, but Kevin Needham, good coverage on that one. Third and eight. Brendan Kearns moving out to right end this week. Uh, he has played inside, but with Frederick returning. Frederick uh, mans the right, uh, right defensive tackle spot. Let's see if Walpole brings some pressure with Sh uh, Shamoon or Reynard, one of them. And off. Oh, nice save. Pierre gets up the mile yeah. for first out of about the 20. <laughs> to the 34, maybe. Yeah, so it'll be fourth down. Number 20 for Hingham there. Will St. Pierre, another captain. Actually made a nice move in the backfield. He he looked like he was going to be wrapped up for no gain, maybe even a small loss, but he cut back towards the middle and was able to gain three or four yards to give him a more makeable fourth down here. All right, All right fourth and about five for, uh, for Hardeman. <laughs> Look back to pack, gets it off just in time, goes overthrow. There you go, fourth down that stop. Deep, yep. Two DNs, uh, Kearns yeah. and Abatey got to uh, the quarterback there, number 10, Jake Vahalik. Uh, cost, I think, a little bit of a missed throw, but there was good coverage downfield. Well, yeah, was that Cash Cantrell? Cantrell. Yeah, yeah, number 10, Cash Cantrell. He actually had the inside position, and uh, it was really going to be tough to complete that pass. Great, uh, I mean, besides the one big play there, right. good uh, series good. by the local yep. defense. All right, so Walpole will have its first time with the ball, rushing up to the line here. Snap. McKenzie looks, he completes it to Abdal Kalak. Enough for a first down up to about the 43, maybe. I think maybe. he got the first down, but he's close for sure. Let's see. Nope, just, it'll be, yeah, they're going to give it to him. Okay. Yeah. Give him forward progress on that. Yeah. yeah, I like the little rhythm pass, the short pass to start, and I, obviously I love finding Abdal Kalak right away, getting him involved. Right. <clears throat> and off to Keys, breaks one tackle, gets up to about the 45, it'll be a pickup of about a yard. Not a lot of room there. Offensive line to me has come a long way here over the course of the last few games. Left tackle, Peter Folan, left guard, Matt Reynard, center, Chris Gillis, right guard, Brendan Kearns, right tackle, Joe Malone. They've really done a good job recently. The running game has really developed as the year has gone on. But on that one, no game. So no, we'll see if we can. Uh, second down, about nine and a half for Walpole. McKenzie with a keeper. Avoids one tackle, gets up, he's got a first down into Hingham territory to about the 43-yard line. Yeah, really nice move there. He was—he was, looked like he was going to be wrapped up for a little bit of a loss, but a little hesitation right. allowed that defender to kind of fall behind by him, and he ended up getting the first down. McKenzie being impressive on the run right. there. Obviously, he's wowed everybody with his arm, but right. uh, you know, great run there. What was that 12? 12. 12, 12 yards, right. yeah. They, don't use, they haven't been using that quarterback run this year. They haven't had to. Right. But it's good to know that it's there. Pass complete to Abdal Kalak. Still got his feet down to about the 34. Pickup of about uh, nine. A little bit different design there. We haven't seen that. I haven't seen that from Walpole. But uh, with uh, Kalak running behind a couple other receivers, 
Um, his second catch, that's about an eight yard catch there. Second down and about uh, two. Well, Walpole's been getting a whole bunch of f folks involved in the offense, Hughes and St. Cyr. Let's see what happens here. Down the sideline, overthrow. Yeah, that was, was Hughes. Hughes. Yeah, Had a little the, go route. I couldn't, I mean, I, I, from here, it didn't look like it was off by too much, but it must have been uh, a little bit out of bounds. Right, yeah. But on second and two in uh, Hingham's territory, it's a good. it was a good play to take a shot. Sure. Third down now for Walpole. 5.29 left in this first quarter. Johnny Dehar. Dehar is checking in. I know Webb was in there, but yeah. now Dehar's in. Webb went out when uh, Dehar came in. And here's Dehar on the sweep. So he's got the first down. Yeah. To about the 28, maybe. To the 28. A lot of speed there. I was just thinking that as you were yeah. like, that is a pass. I know sometimes <coughs> it looks like a run, but. Mackenzie looks firing. Oh, over. nice pass. Got uh, Abdal Kalak. And that'll be down to the 15. Looks like it's under the 15. Pick up a 13. He had plenty of time on that one. Yeah. And Kalak. Hard to cover. Right. <clears throat> Three receptions already for Jamal. 31 yards. Well pull the new set of downs from the 15 yard line. Officials call time for some reason. I think there's a clock issue. 441 they're saying, it's not 431. It's not 431 now. 441, yeah, you're right. And off, no pass Ooh. knocked down at the line. Looked like he was going to. I think that was going to McGrath. Um, I can't see the number. It's kind of all messed, bunched up. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, he faked the handoff to Keys. But the Hingham defender made a, uh, you know, made a good play jumping right. up to block that pass. So. Yeah. Second and ten. Back to pass again as McKenzie fires over the middle. Complete. At St. Cyr. Down to the five. That's close to a first down. Will be, yeah. Uh, and it will be a first down. I love the way Walpole's been going to a uh, bunch of other folks. I mean, Abdal Kalak obviously is the is the main attraction, but right. Hughes and Saint Cyr and Daher and a yeah. uh, little bit, a couple uh, passes to McGrath, as well as using Keys in the passing game as well. Right. And here he is in the and running off game. To Keys, pushing, He's pushing, in. pushing, and he is nope. close. Oh, they gave it to him. They yeah. gave it to him. Touchdown, Logan Keys. Five yard run. Great drive by Walpole. McKenzie remains on fire. Five for five on that drive, 48 yards. Found Kalak for three of those receptions. Found St. Cyr for one. Uh, Johnny Deher on the uh, little, that it's a pass, but a yep. little reverse, like a jet sweep type of thing. Um, yeah, moved the ball very efficiently. They did. McKenzie very just good. continues to put the ball right on the money. Sorry, McKenzie did miss one on that knockdown. Five for six. Yeah. I think I said five for five. No, I've got seven passes. There was another at the incomplete. Yep. 
Okay. So Nick Foynes for the extra point. The kick is up and through. And Walpole takes a 7 0 lead here. 8 1 into the first quarter. Great way to start. Good stop on defense right. after giving up the big play, getting the ball on turnovers, and then again, very efficient on the drills. I think starting out with some. They took one shot on second and one, but they, their passing game on that drive was sort right. of. Uh, you know, aimed at short passes, getting getting yep. the ball in guys' hands that uh, can make plays with their feet. And uh, yeah, it worked out 7 nothing. All right, Foynes sets the football up. You know, we were talking before the game about their schedule and their results, and they lost to Braintree, and Walpole killed Braintree. I, I don't know, I mean, to me, like, they, they, they play in a tough conference, and uh, I know they did you know, feel like they gave Duxbury a pretty good game. Duxbury right. is seven and one. Yeah. I think they're the number one tip ranked team in D four. So but it's good to see them come out and establish. Fumble by St. Peter oh. goes down yeah. and lands. Oh great for I Walpole. think he slipped. Yeah. yeah. Walpole will get it by a uh, Hingham will start on their own five yard line. Yeah, that was St. Pierre, the captain. He he dropped the ball, he reached down and got it, but I think his back foot gave out or something. Yeah, he slipped and uh, he went, went down, down to his knee. knee. But this is uh, deep at the five yard line. It'll be a test for Hingham here. First and ten for the red and white. I don't white see any uniforms, changes in personnel. Numbers. And off. Uh, like St. Pierre. Yeah, no, six to uh, the, the other kid there, uh, Brightly. Uh, Bailey, yeah, Bailey, Chase uh, Bailey. Picks up about about the nine pick up of four yeah Quinn McNeil from the safe deep safety position coming up and making that stop but a good four yard get me in there take four yards right especially down where they are right yeah yeah get it out from under the shadow of the goal posts Yeah, that was uh, Reynard. You can see 59 coming in from his inside linebacker spot. Good tackle. And that was a loss, I loss think. A yard, about a yard or so. Yeah. yeah. That was 20 St. Pierre on that. Uh, right. Look at an interesting little yeah, offense, right? A lot of misdirection. Actually, yeah. Loss of two. Every third and about eight. Shot eight, long seven. Cantrell trying to uh, get a little bit of misdirection there. Uh, yeah, I think it was good coverage. I think the pass was a little high, though. Yeah, I think yeah. if the pass was down a little bit, it would have been a 50-50, like Cantrell breaking it up or, or the Hingham wide receiver obviously making the catch as the other 50. But, uh, but yeah, three and out, so making them punt deep from their own end. And Abdal Kalak, dangerous returner. Uh, he's standing in, in uh, Hingham territory. Right. Gunnar Corey doing the punting from the end zone. I'm always curious to see if teams kick away from him. Oh, oh it went over his head. Arm safety. Arm oh, there's a safety for Walpole. Uh, snap went over uh, Corey, Corey's head. And Walpole gets a safety. So Walpole takes a nine to nothing lead here. First round game of the Division Three State Football Champion Playoffs. 16 teams qualify. Walpole qualified as the fourth seed. Hingham the 13th. 
And uh, Hingham will be punting here. Uh, I don't know if they can kick off a punt. You know, it's funny. Most teams seem to punt on the situ in yeah. this situation. But I see the T out there, so looks like he's going to kick off. Yeah. Again, another situation where I say, do these guys watch? They have to. I'm sure they've watched film and seen how dangerous Abdal Kalak is. A couple right. kick returns for touchdowns, lots of other receiving touchdowns. But they got good, uh, besides Kalak, they got Daher and Keys back there. So some of their best weapons for sure. Harry Bradshaw kicking off here. Oh, a ground ball. Little squibber, yep. That's Keys. Up to 41. Up to midfield and into Hingham territory. Still fighting down to about the 47 yard line of Hingham. And that's where the Timberwolves will start their next drive. So obviously kicking it into the ground. They are aware of Abdal Kalak. Right. <clears throat> But hey, we got great field position here, like you said, at the 47. And here comes McKenzie again, who's really blossomed since, I would say, game three, right? Yeah. Game yeah. three of this year. Came into the year as a never started a varsity game. Actually played a couple times. Actually threw his first varsity pass as a freshman, and it was a touchdown. Right. touchdown. And then, then he only threw one as a sophomore, and that was a touchdown, <laughs> right. too. Oh, no, he threw two. Two. But one of them was for a touchdown. On the run here, coming towards us. Let's get out of bounds. Let's go out of bounds yeah. at about the 40-yard line. Yeah. Quick pressure there, and McKenzie recognized it quickly. I'll tell you, we're, he's spoiled because he hasn't been getting a lot of pressure this year. I don't recall them giving up too many sacks, do you? No. I don't at all. But uh, there's a quick pressure on that one. But, uh, uh, you know, just like the uh, first drive when he made that nice little run, he, he reacted quickly and ended up getting six or seven yards out of it. Pick up of six on that for Noah. Patrick Webb in at blocking back, and that's Keys following He's him. He's going around the right. He's got a lot of Spot. room. Off to the races. See you later. Walpole, Logan Keys on a 41-yard run. He kind of thought it was going to be a run with Patrick Webb in there. He's, he's been comes in on short yardage, and you know he's sort of lined up as a blocking back sort of uh, offset usually. And uh, yeah, a lot of big offensive line and web. A lot of credit there. I don't think Keys got touched. No, he just went right, blowing right through. Nick Foynes in to attempt the extra point. Snap, the ball is down, the kick is up, and right through. Walpole jumps out to a 16 to nothing lead. The offense continues to be a force, uh, as it has been since, like we said, game three this year right. against Wellesley. Um, no, they ran into Needham the following week, and but, Needham held them to 19. But, but it was a, in the rain, and uh, exactly. they did have the lead yep. just before the half, before everything kind of went haywire on them. But ever and they had then, the chance towards the end to, to go for the two-point conversion that was stopped and right. tied the game. But ever since then, it's been a track meet, right, right, for these guys. I mean, they're just running up and down the field. Uh, it's been really impressive to watch. The O-lines come together. The running games come together. McKenzie's just absolutely blossomed. Right. Uh, great arm, Junior. <laughs> and Abdal Kalak uh, has been a star. Right. All right, Foyne's getting ready to kick off. And it's on its way. Shot back taken at the 10. Up to the 20, 25, and... Ball comes at the, uh, on the 26 yard line, maybe. Griffin McCarthy, number 36, sophomore. We're starting to see a few sophomores getting plugged into some game situations. Last week, of course, we saw Dylan Needham um, pl getting plugged in, and uh, they do play a couple of them on special teams, and they contribute. They, they make tackles. They're involved. So uh, uh, getting their varsity chops right. uh, experience on special teams, working their way to more playing time, obviously, as the year goes on and into next year mostly. But... Snap. 
rolling to his right. Look, he's going to go go for it, and he's brought down after a pickup of maybe a yard. Yeah, that was uh, Shamoon coming up from the inside linebacker spot. Boy, Walpole's been blessed to have Shamoon and Reynard in the middle. They make a ton of tackles. Right. Only picked up a yard. Looked like that had a chance to be, you know, uh, four or five, six yards. Yeah, yeah. Second down and about eight and a half to go. <clears throat> a lot of pre-snap adjustment against the Yeah. Walpole's D is uh, moving, moving, moving. It's a handoff. Nowhere. Yeah. Stopped at about the 30, uh, 25 yeah, yard guess line. Guess what? It was when one of the two inside guys again, Matt Reynard, shooting the gap. Boy, I don't have, I'm not privy to statistics, uh, you know, tackling statistics, but those right. two guys have piled up tackles this year. <laughs> and uh, by the way, you know, they say all the time, lots of credit goes to the inside D tackles, holding up the blockers. McKay, tonight it's Frederick. It has been Carnes in the middle. I see uh, they made a couple subs in. Uh, Marco O'Brien, 53's in there. He's actually had a couple nice plays last week, and I see Kamari Hughes in at right defensive end as well. A little timeout now. Uh, end of the period. Oh, okay. Yep. End of the period. That was actually a loss of, of two of that play. It's third and ten for uh, Hingham here. But we've played one quarter of this Division Three MIAA round of uh, uh, eight, 16, round of 16 games. Walpole on top, 16 to nothing. Logan Keyes got the team rolling first at uh, eight minutes uh, of the game with a five-yard run. Nick Foyne's extra point made it seven to nothing. Walpole got a, a safety when the snap to the punter went out of the end zone, and so they gave him a nine to nothing lead at 9:51. And then just. Uh, 20 seconds, 30 seconds later, Logan Keyes bolted in from 41 yards out. Foyne's kick made it 16, and that's where we stand right now. Can't ask for a better start uh, to get playoff season underway. Um, long way to go, though. Long way to go. Yep. We'll switch sides now. Walpole will be going left to right on your TV screen. It'll be third and 10 for Hingham from their own 26. The hard luck back to pass, looking, looking, going. It's gonna be wide, open. wide open. Big gainer again here. Down to the 43, it was uh, Jeremy Aylward with the uh, catch and run to the Walpole 43. Yeah, nice job by Jake Verhalek. He kind of stood in the pocket. Uh, good protection that time, and uh, a little coverage mishap there by Walpole ended up being... Uh, he ended up being wide open there. Right. And another big, so two big gains, but let's see, Walpole still has an opportunity here to hold ground, but they are in uh, Walpole territory, I think at the 43 yard line here. Timeout. Timeout call by Hingham. 11 minutes, 18 seconds to go in the second quarter. Walpole on top, 16 to nothing. He's given up two big plays, but the rest of the time they've been pretty much able to uh, keep Ingham definitely in check. Let's see, well, we've got a minute here. Uh, Hingham finished third in the Keenan Division of the Patriot League at three and two, three and five overall. The Harbormen are two and two in the road and are being outscored by an average of 25 to 23. The red and white also started the season slow, losing to Braintree 20 to 16, Hanover 37 15, and Weymouth 33 21, before rebounding for a pair of wins over Plymouth North 28 to 8 and Whitman Hanson 25 to 14. 
Since then, Hingham has lost to Marshfield, 41-22, and Duxbury, 28-12, around a 42-14 victory over Silver Lake Regional. And we are back to live action again. Fahalik back to pass, going down the left sideline. Got it. Intercepted Got it. by Keys, Keys at the yep. 10. He's coming back to the 15 and brought down at the 20-yard line. Walpole with the turnover. So Timberwolves take over on their 20s. Logan Keys uh, doing it both sides of the ball tonight. Absolutely. He's been uh, dynamite on coverage all year. And again, he was right in stride with the receiver. What I really like at the end of that return is that he sensed to. You know, there was a Hingham guy coming up behind him, and he put two arms over the ball. A lot of times you see the, the chop of the ball to cause that fumble, and uh, he put two arms on it, held on to it, and Walpole now takes over at the 20. And he'll get a break, Johnny Daher, number one in the backfield. Patrick Webb Patrick blocking Webb back. Motion. Daher going uh, around yeah, the left side, but looks a flag like looks like there. procedure yeah. maybe. Yeah. That'll move it back to the 15. First down and 15 to go for Walpole. All right, first and 15 for the T-Wolves. Kenzie back to pass. Look, going deep. He's got Abdal Kalar. What a pass. What a catch. <laughs> Still going. He's down to the 40, 35, cutting across the field, 30-yard line. Still on his feet. Down to the 25-yard line. Abdal Kalak. 60 yards. Uh, let's see, 35 and 25, uh, 60 yards, yeah. I mean, yes, it was a great catch, but what a throw. It was. He it was a led great him throw, perfectly. Yep. Uh, and then Kalak, Abdal Kalak, as he normally does, uh, he makes things happen after the catch. I mean, he's, he's just a dangerous runner. But uh, what a throw. Yes. And he's been zinging the ball recently, but that was right. sort of a nice touch pass, even yeah. though it was, you know, 25, 30 yards down the field. He placed it right in there. Webb in motion. Dayer. Dayer going around the corner. He cuts up field. He may have picked up three on the play. Let's see where they mark him. Out of bounds. Uh, looks like a pickup of three to the 22. To the 23. A pickup of two. A lot of speed Johnny Dayher has. Johnny. I hope I'm saying his name right, Dr. Uh, yeah, Dayher. I know. <laughs> uh, my apologies to him if uh, I'm not yeah. getting it right. Looks like Webb is still in the game, which means there's one less wide out than normal. But there he is again. Up the middle. The big go. Oh, go nice in. move. Go in. Johnny Dayer, six more points and a late oh, flag, a late, late hit. hit. Yeah. Dayer goes 23 yards for the touchdown. O-line again with a nice hole, but Johnny Dare yeah. um, made a beautiful move. Once he got past the line of scrimmage, he was able to make a guy miss, and then he ran through a tackle, and then you can't catch him. He's a track guy. Uh, the speed got him to the end zone, 23-yard run. Walpole piles on another touchdown. Boings in for the extra point attempt. Ball's down, the kick is up, and it's dead through. 23 to nothing now, Walpole on top. The offense just continues its dominance in recent weeks. Right. Just weapons everywhere. 
Yeah, this this team is just improved by leaps and bounds. So it looks like that penalty is being marked off on the kickoff. After yeah. The, yeah, after the, so Walpole will be actually kicking off from the 45 of uh, of Hingham. Boings puts down his T. Kick to see yeah. if they can pin him deep here. Gets it at the five. Oh! Gets him up oh, I thought he him. broke free. Yeah. Up to about the 19, maybe the 20. Yeah, Jake Goneman, son of the dynamic PA announcer for Walpole High here. Number nine made that tackle. Oh, the and you can hear, I don't know if you can hear it on the broadcast, <laughs> but he's exhorting the students to get loud. Yeah. And it looks like we've got a decent showing by the brigade up on that far right corner of the stands opposite us here. Handoff. Fumble. Fumble. Ooh. Wow, that ball just popped almost like yeah. a little rugby scrum. It'll be actually a loss of one on the play because of the fumble. Second down on 11. One yard loss, second down, 11 to go. And off. Oh, what a hit. That yeah. was Raynard. Woo. That was on uh, Ryan St. Croix. Wow, he just he just ran right through him on that tackle. Raynard and uh, Shamoon are having a night. A loss of about four on that. Back to the uh, 15. It'll bring third and 15 for Hingham. Mahalik looking He's good open. for someone. Oh, he might get a flag, yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was that, you know, it's interesting that he was that open. I don't know if, key, if the coverage, Keys kind of didn't have the deep guy. Maybe Needham was supposed to come over, but right. he, as he was fighting his way over, he was coming so hard. He, he uh, you know, I think he felt like he was a little short of getting there, and he reached out, and they, they caught it. And right. It's going to result in a first down for Hingham. First down for Hingham at the... The way Hingham uh, play design had, they had two guys on that left sideline there. And oh, it wasn't stayed as bad. With yeah, as it looks, it's going to be at the uh, twenty, at the thirty-yard line. Just ten yards. It must be. Yeah. Was it? Uh, yeah. It was the? Was it just start at the twenty? I didn't even notice. Uh, the fifteen. The fifth, for fifteen. For yeah. Fifteen from the fifteen-yard line. There you go. So it'll be first and ten from the thirty-yard line of Hingham. Eight forty-one left to go in the first half. Looking quick pass hit right away at the 35 by Hughes. Is that Hughes? Cantrell. Yeah. Cantrell. Yeah. Pick up a five on the play. Second and five.
Hand off to St. Pierre going around the right side. Probably has the first Steps down. out of bounds and looks at, yeah. We'll mark him out of bounds at the 41. And that'll be enough for a first down. First and ten here for Hingham. Baholik going to his left. Looking down there, throws over the middle, complete. To number 86, Gunnar Corey. And he's got another first down at the Walpole 30, 40-yard line. Pickup of 19 on that play. Yeah, I like this, uh, I like this sophomore quarterback for Hollick. He, he does a really nice job. Uh, um, you know, avoiding pressure, getting the ball where he needs to go. You know, he did, I, I wouldn't say he has the arm of Noah McKenzie, but he seems right. pretty smart and seems like he knows where he wants to go with yeah, the ball. Yeah. So a couple more years left for him at Hingham. And up reverse. double reverse. Going around to the right, trying to look upfield, and he will not get anywhere. He'll lose yards. Yeah, Cesario, Danny Cesario up there. Oh, it's Chris Teague on the carry. Right. Loses back to the 42. Really good discipline by Walpole uh, to not overreact to the initial handoff. A loss of two in the play, second and 12. Might have got back to the line of scrimmage, but that's about it. A whole bunch of guys in on that tackle. Right. Hard to single out anybody. <laughs> yeah. um, but I saw Marco O'Brien. He, he's now, he came in at D tackle before. He's at DN now, but he was in there along with Shamoon. I think uh, Quinn McNeil was in there as well. Um, so now O'Brien moves inside. McCabe comes out, and Hughes comes in to take the right end spot. Third Time and out. 12. Walpole. Timeout by Walpole with 6.05 to go in the first half. Your Timberwolves rolling so far here, 23 to nothing. Two touchdowns by Logan Keyes, one by John Dayer. Uh, three extra points by Nick Foynes, and a safety has accounted for all of our points so far. Uh, defense has, you know, stepped up when they had to. They had a, an interception by Keyes, jawed the ball loose uh, for a, a loss of a few yards on what looked like, you know, would have been a five or six yard pickup. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they have had a couple big plays. I, you know, well, Hingham's got a nice little offense, a lot of misdirection. Uh, uh, the, the sophomore, like I just said a few minutes ago, is doing a nice job getting the ball out quickly. They haven't really touched him. A couple times I thought they had a beat on him, but he, he got the ball out in time. Um, so, yeah, they listen, 23 to nothing. They haven't right. scored, but they've had some decent plays. And, yep. uh, um, you know, certainly Walpole still has to, you know, be aware here and... Uh, Seems like an offense that could put some points on the board. Right. All right, third and 12 for the Harbourman. We haven't seen Bailey as a target. He had like five or six targets in the first quarter, but not in this drive. 16, the sophomore. Rolling to his left for Hollick. Look, it gets it off, but it's out of bounds. He did get hit on he that did, one. Yeah. So they finally got to him, and that affected the throw. And uh, it looks like they're going to go for it here. They are. 
fourth and 14 from the uh, fourth and 12 from the 42 of Wa uh, Walpole. This will be interesting. I mean, what do they have to lose? 23 yeah. nothing. So. It's still early, though. Baholic, I'm sure, will pass going back. Looking and going to oh, run nice it. He, he may get the first down. He does. Down to the 25-yard line. Again, kind of smart. Just, he recognized he didn't have the guy open. And he, uh, the middle opened up, and the uh, sophomore took off and uh, got the first down. A pickup of 17 on the play. I like the way he plays. So a new set of downs for Hingham. Side. Uh, back. Pick up a. Uh, he might have got back to the line of scrimmage. That's about it. That was uh, St. Pierre on the carry. And uh, yeah, they gave him a yard maybe. Second and nine from the Walpole 24. Again, designed misdirection, and Walpole does a good job staying disciplined and staying in their lanes to stop it for no gain. Roll out. Roll out to his right, looking, stops, fires. Wide open. Wide open. Touchdown. That is really nice job by uh, Verhalik. I think that's St. Pierre. 20, yeah. 20 it is St. Pierre. Yeah. Yeah. Really nice job. I like the way they roll him out. They have gotten a few guys open, so again, not, this game is far from over. That's a 24-yard reception. Of course, Hingham's challenge with stopping Walpole's offense. And, you know, the last few games, that's been difficult Kick for anybody to up. do. Yeah, good. By uh, Harry Bradshaw. That's a good answer by the, by Hingham. Really nice. I thought the quarterback really ran that drive very well, and I like the way they roll him out. I like the way he recognizes pressure. Like I said, he doesn't seem to have the strongest arm, but he gets it to where he needs to go. Right. Yeah. And that fourth down play that he yeah the scramble that was big heads up play by him. St. Pierre, he leads the team in scoring. He's got nine touchdowns on the conversion. Uh, now he's got ten touchdowns on the conversion rush for uh, 62 points. 11th best in D3 coming into the game. All right, let's see if they squib it again. Keep it away from Abdel Kalak. Little pooch kick. Fair catch. Fair catch called. Control yep. at the 32 yard line of Walpole. Yep, so they've watched the film. So the Timberwolves will take over on their 32, holding a 23 to 7 advantage with 419 to go in the first half. Timberwolves come up to the line. Looks like they're changing the football out. Hand off to Keys. Keys. Great run. It's a first down up to the 43 yard line of Walpole. Pickup of 11. 
Right side of the line there, uh, Malone, Kearns. I didn't see who the wideout was on that play, but uh, was able to cave in the right, the left side of the Higgins defensive line, and Keys had some room. First and ten at the 44-yard line. Pick up of a dozen on that for Logan. Keys again. Breaks through, gets, uh, picks up, look, he looked like he was going to get hit in the backfield and gets it up to the 47 yard line. Pick up of three. We've been seeing a lot more of uh, Walpole using that uh, Patrick Webb in that blocking back role. come up to the line. I think I just saw that Patrick Webb got named a uh, lacrosse captain. Oh, really? In the Good spring, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> oh, oh, the keeper by McKenzie going around the left side. Get out of and bounds. he goes out of bounds. It looks like he got the first down yeah. to about the 44 of uh, Hingham. Nice little spin yeah, move there. Right in the 45. Spin move to get away from that first defender, and then he raced to the sideline. Impressed me tonight with the uh, legs. Obviously, he's been doing it with the arm. Right. I said earlier this year, it was one of the things I was wondering about him. We had, you know, Corey Kilroy last year, who I, you know, was a really strong runner. I, I don't think he was, after seeing McKenzie Blossom here. I don't know if he was as strong as passer as McKenzie, but he was a good right. thrower. Yeah. But McKenzie's obviously dynamite, been right on target. Fading screen. Complete. Oh, just tackled. That was two keys. Upended at about the 40. The 40. Pick up a five. Yeah, that was a jailbreak, but that's obviously you could see the screen. But uh, I don't know who it was for Hingham, but they held on the shoestring tackle, or else he had some he had some open field did, in front of yeah. him. Back to Paskin, drop it straight back, firing long and deep, and it'll be overthrown. I think yeah, that was Abdel Kalak, wasn't it? I think that was Hughes, number seven. Okay. Yep. Third and about six for Walpole. I'd like to see, you know. Obviously, this is an obvious statement, but Walpole keep the ball a little longer here. Right. Keep yeah. it out of Hingham's hands in the last minute of the half. Hingham offense has a little momentum. And, of course, Walpole will get the ball coming out. Another timeout. Yeah, time out call. Walpole right. will get the ball coming out in the second half. So yeah. It would be good just to get another first down and run some clock. And if they do have to give it up, eventually they don't give Hingham too much time to potentially score. Right, right. This time up was taken by Walpole. Let's see, Vaholic has a seven, uh, this is the uh, eighth touchdown pass that he's thrown this year. Corey has four touchdown pass receptions, uh, four touchdowns, three on receptions. Okay, Walpole coming out third and about six from the 40-yard 40, 40 line of Hingham. Kenzie's back to pass, plenty of time, fires on the side, complete for a first down to Abdal Kalak. Now that was a bullet to the sideline. Good route by Abdal Kalak. Uh, ran it. Oh, is there a penalty down? Is there a flag down the field? A procedure of Walpole. 
So that'll move it back to the 45 and negate that first down. Didn't see anything obvious, but. Must have been alignment, maybe. Boy, that was a, could have been a big play for Walpole, like I said, to keep that ball for a little bit extra clock. Right. And now we have third and what, 10 ish? 11? Uh, 11, I think. Yeah. Just under two minutes to go in the first half here from John Turco Field. Mackenzie back to Paskin. Again, he's got lots of time. Fires on the side. Did Incomplete. he get it? No. No. Bounced free. Oh, what flag was the flag? That could be a big. That was off McGrath's hand, or maybe no, Abdal Kalak's hands. But it looked Walpole sidelines clapping over there. Yeah. Boy, that was a bullet. It and was. it was right on his hands. Right. Probably too hard. Personal foul. Personal foul, yeah. On Ingham. That's a big mistake. I wonder what happened there. Maybe it was just like after they were getting down, after they were on the ground, there was a yeah. little extra shove or something. Must have been, right? So the ball will come down to the. That's huge. Now Walpole has, right, I think they have two, 31. they took two timeouts, right? So they have yeah. one. So they have some time to run some clock score. And like I said, they're getting the ball coming out here in the second half. But Hingham, this is a key moment of the game for Hingham. Keys cuts it upfield, cuts back again. Oh, nice! Go down to about the 20, 20 yard line. Yeah, I think uh, he's down near the 15, right? No? Yeah. No. You're right, the 20. So about 11 yards in that one. Uh, yep. Boy, there was nothing on the outside. Hingham did a good job bottling that up, but Keys stayed patient. Uh, looked inside and made the cutback and, and actually got a first down. Well, they okay, they haven't changed it yet, but it is a first down. Yeah. There Chase he goes, again. wide open again. Oh, down to the, about the one yard line. So first and goal for Walpole from. Oh, that's about the six. Six. Yeah. Pick up a 14 on that play for Logan. Logan's running has really, really jumped out. Uh, every game, he's, it seems like he's gotten better. He's got a lot more confidence. It's, uh, yeah, and his line, by the way, that coincides with his line as well. I mean, he's a super right. talented kid. He's fast. He had great year last year. I think he got off to a slow start because the whole offense got off to a slow start. I don't know if there was a lot of, a lot of holes, a lot of room for him. But you, if you give him room, that's if you give him that first bit of space, right. he's going to finish it. He's going to, you know, break off a big run or break off a big touchdown run. Mackenzie looking, throws it over to Dal Kalak. It is incomplete. <laughs> Twenty-three seconds left in the half. Third down and goal from the six. Tough area of the field, right? The players are bunched up a little. I don't know if they have a timeout. They might have one. So, like, I don't know if that takes the run out. Right. You can't spike it because you're it's third down and goal. Oh, right. That's right. Yeah. So. You know, if you run a play, and then you'd have to run your field goal team on it. So, I don't know. It's like you have to go into the end zone on this one. Yeah. Look at Abdal Kalax lined up in the backfield. That's a little different. And give it to him. Give it to him. Oh, and he passes back. Oh, incomplete. Wow. Oh, that he was kind of passing while he was, he was passing while he was running. Yeah. Um, uh, 
Uh, It'll bring up a fourth down. And I think it comes Legatron. Yeah, Legatron's coming out to try a, let's see, looks like a 22-yard, 22-yard field goal. Number six, Paul Whalen, the junior quarterback, is the holder. I'd like them to see get something out of this. It would be kind of a little bit of a mini win for Hingham to hold them to nothing. Yeah. Snap the ball down. The kick is up, and it is good. good. Nice. Walpole, a 22-yard field goal by Nick Foynes. Gives Walpole a 26-7 to advantage. Yeah, perfect drive. It took up the rest of the clock. I thought Hingham had some momentum on offense. I just thought, okay, let's try not to give him the ball back and, and get some points on the board. That would be the optimal situation. Right. Uh, and that's exactly what happened. They yep. kept the ball. There was a huge – I don't know what happened over there. I didn't right. see the Hingham coaches complaining too much, but uh, there was a personal foul over there that extended Walpole's drive and uh, a little bit of keys running. Uh, got him closer for Nick Foynes, Nick Legatron Foynes, to kick that field goal. Opal's had a, I think I said this earlier in the year, Opal's had a really good run of kickers yeah. in this last number of years. Right. All right, Morell and St. Pierre back deep for Hingham. Wow. They go Boom, to that one. Morell on the five. He's up to the ten. Well, well, He's got room. He's got some room here. Still going, goes out of bounds, but they've only got five seconds to go now here. Yeah. Hingham ball first and ten on their so what are they gonna mark it? Looks I, like on the I tell you, 45, it, 46. It's, it's amazing to think like how you know how many times they've kicked off, right? Because they've been scoring so many points and how effective the coverage units have been. Right. So it's yeah. almost like a shock to see another team get out this far in a kickoff return. Their right. coverage their coverage team has been so good this year. Yeah. All right, well, he's going to need some time on this one. Let's see if we can get some last pressure. Play of the quarter of the half. That was offsides on Hingham. 16, um, oh, don't have it memorized. Bailey, Bailey yeah. looks like he moved a little soon. Back to the 41. Now, Walpole, you got to stay disciplined here. You can't be chasing. This is like one of those, you know, uh, hook and ladder type of situations, or because uh, I don't see, I don't see, uh, I don't see Verhalek being able to get it down the field. So they're just going to get it to uh, someone who, an athlete who can possibly make a play. Back, going down the left sideline. Intercepted. Is he in? By There's like no call. Logan Keys again. Oh, okay. Yeah, another interception by Keys. And we've reached halftime here at Turco Field. This uh, round of 16. Uh, Division three uh, playoff game for MIAA. Walpole on top, 26 to seven. Logan Key started it off with a five-yard run. Eight minutes into the game, Nick Foyne's extra point made it seven to nothing. After a safety, uh, Walt Key scored again on a 41-yard run. Foynes' kick made it 16 to nothing, at ending the first quarter. In the second quarter, John Dayer scored from 23 yards out. Foynes made the extra point. Uh, Hingham came back with Will St. Pierre, pulling in a 24-yard pass from uh, Jake Vatal Vahalak. Vahalak. And uh, then Walpole got that back with a 23-yard field goal by Foynes with a minute 15 to go before halftime. And that's where we stand now, 26-7. Uh, to 7. Any thoughts before the break, Mike? No, I think I've got everything I wanted to say in. And, uh, yeah, we get the ball coming out. So it would just be a good opportunity to put a nail in the coffin here by going, you know, putting another score on the board early in the third. Right. All right, the teams are taking a break. We'll do the same. We'll be back shortly with second half action.
Griffin, Nia DeGilio, May Bailey, Cassie Burke, Caitlin Fields, Tia Romano, Hannah McCarthy, Kylie McKean, Maddie McDonald, McDonald, Demi Gazellas, Audrey Tushka, Abby Donovan, Lindsay Jones, Wiley McGinnis, Alexa Dayer, and Mia Hayes. Great job, Great job girls. girls! And the and coach! Body of the coach! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to second half action here from John Turco Field on the Walpole High Campus with your Walpole Timberwolves on top, 26-7 to in this Division Three opening round game, the round of 16 uh, against the Hingham Haberman. Uh, some unofficial stats here. So seven for 10 is what I've got. Seven for 11 is what I've got. Noel McKenzie out for 18, 25, 35, 38, 48, 108, 113 yards, I think. We're right on, Rick. Ooh, we're, we're actually getting, oh, first time oh, ever. Love it. <laughs> uh, uh, Logan Keys, I've got two, three, six, eight carries. Seventy-eight yards. Um, um, I missed a carry then. So yeah, the seventy-eight. Then yeah. John Dea, two for twenty-five, and Noah McKenzie three for uh, twenty-nine. So that Walpole's uh, has two interceptions, both by Logan Keys. The last one was on the last play of the half. Uh, and uh, it's been just been a, a you know another what we've been gotten used to in the last five games with Walpole. Yeah. Very explosive offense, uh, hard nosed, tough defense so far, and and it's paying off for them so far. Yeah, like you said, a continuation. McKenzie's been on fire. Kalak has been a stud. Uh, they're mixing in guys. Keys has uh, been explosive with the big uh, couple touchdown runs. And Johnny Dare, uh, obviously with that nice 23-yard run there too for the touchdown. Um, defensively, um, bend but don't break. I mean, you give up seven points to a playoff team, you you got to be happy. Hingham did put together a nice drive uh, at the end of that, in the middle of that second quarter. So it'll be interesting to see uh, if that continues or Walpole makes some adjustments that uh, clamp down a little bit on that. But Walpole really has a chance to kind of put a nail in the coffin on this game on the first drive of this half. Right, I mean, yeah, because they will get the ball to begin the second yeah, half. Yeah, they haven't punted yet. So, um, to my recollection, they no, haven't No, they haven't, no. Um, so if they can put another score on the board, I mean, that's going to make it super, I mean, very, very difficult right. for Hingham to come back. Yeah, while well, we've got a minute here, folks, we know that you would love to be able to do what Mike and I do here for football or for actually for any sport at Walpole High School. We're looking for uh, color analysts, play-by-play -play people. We'll work with you to teach you how to do it. If you're interested, contact Executive Director Tamara Green at 508-668-7795 or email her at tgreen at walpolemedia.tv. We're getting ready for this second half kickoff. We are underway. A little shot kick. Oh, got it. They got oh, it. Oh, they got it. As it uh. pays off down to the 27, uh, 27 of Walpole. Oh, that didn't uh, go right. It was picked off by uh, Aiden Crean. Really nice kick by the Hingham uh, kicker. I didn't get the number there, but. Uh, six. Yeah. It's uh, uh, Harry Bradshaw. Yeah, I, Walpole a couple years back had a kicker who could do that pretty well. That used to cause havoc uh, when he did that, but uh, that was perfectly placed. They tried it on the last one, but he, I think he got a little too much of it. Right. And uh, are we coming back here for some? Oh, is he? Oh, offsides. On, oh, uh, my goodness. Another oh, crushing penalty oh for him. Oh, my goodness. That's unbelievable. Oh, that kills. Oh, my goodness. Well, Walpole will know what to expect now. Abdal Kalak looks like the only one back deep for Walpole, but oh. Wow. What a break. 
two crushing penalties for Hingham. The personal foul that extended the last drive of the, of the first half where they, Walpole was able to end up with a field goal. Right. And this play right this here. This one here will frame uh, Hing Hingham would have had the ball on the 25 of Walpole. Uh, now they get to kick it off again. Yeah, Cantrell, he's got to, you know, he's got to be aggressive now coming up to get that if, if right. they're trying it again. It's another one. Cantrell dives and gets it. Yeah, he was a lot more aggressive that right. time. And he had to make actually a diving catch, a really yep. hard catch. Good for him, good hands. And, and he uh, gets it on the 47 of Walpole. What a, what a difference. Unbelievable. Yeah. For a lot of credit to Cash Cantrell there coming right. up to make that stop. I'm sure he was a little surprised, although they did kick it to him on a previous kickoff, but it just came more directly to him. He didn't even have to move. Right. All right, first the 10 for the orange and blue. And off to uh, Keys. Oh, nice finish. Down to the 37, it looks like. 36, maybe. To the 37, a pickup of 10. I think it was about 16-ish or so. From the 47 down to the 36. 47 of oh, Walpole. Oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, great explosion by Keys on that, and really great finish on the run. Two hands on the ball, head down. He knew he was going to get tackled, so he just tried to finish going forward. Johnny Dayer's in now. And again, yeah, yeah. look at Johnny Dayer. Oh, and he gets down to about the 20. Yeah. Was there a flag? It's coming back. Chop block. Chop block, yeah. Oh. Well, that'll bring the ball back. And erase a nice run by Dayer. Yeah, he's quick. And that'll bring the ball almost back into Walpole territory. Into Walpole territory. To the Walpole 48. I wonder if it's a spot foul. Like, oh, no, that's 15 yards. Sorry. 37, yeah. 13, 15 right. yards. Okay. So it'll be first and 25 for uh, the Timberwolves. Walpole comes up to the line. They've tried a couple deep shots to Hughes. They haven't hit yet. There's Johnny Dayer again. Still going. He's off. Another big gain. Still going. Up close to a first. He got the first down, I wow. think. He's down inside the 25-yard line to about the 24. Pickup of 24 on that. Offensive line opening up some gaping holes here. First three plays. One of them was a penalty, but Keys, then Dare, then Dare again. They're marking it on the 25, so pickup of 27 by Dare on that. Credit to Dare, like he's, you know, he's on the smaller side, right? But he's right. super fast and he does run hard. Like he finishes falling forward. Keys again. They're just trying to run the ball here. Right. A couple yards. Yeah. They're going to put it on the 24. Boy, what a missed spot that was. Right, yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. 22. 21, 22, 20. 22. Uh, Twenty-two. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. 22. 21, I think. So pick up of, uh, that was Dayer on that? No, one? that was Keys. Keys. Keys again. Keys again going around the left side, avoids one tackle, cuts it upfield. Looks like down about the 18. At about the 18, yeah. Walpole coming out, establishing the run. 
Excuse me. There was a defender right there when Keyes got the ball, but a little hesitation move and then uh, beating him to the corner. So froze the defender, and then Keyes was able to beat him to the corner, and uh, he was able to pick up some yards on that. Third and three, I would imagine. Yeah. Another run here, yep. And it's going to be close. Close, yeah. Down to the 15. If it's the 15, it'll be a little short. <coughs> Are they going to measure or no? No, nope, going to give him the first down. All right, they gave Keys, Keys three yards on that. And a new set of downs for Walpole from the Hingham 15. 8.30 and counting in the third quarter. Walpole up by 19, looking to add to that lead. Walpole with close to 200 yards rushing tonight. Passing has usually been the the, the big, uh, you know, the numbers, but the, tonight's the running game. Oh, I don't think the, I nope. think that was a broken play, and McKenzie just tried to make the best of it there. He got, uh, I think he picked up maybe a yard. Yeah, someone, uh, well, I don't know. Maybe it was a design like that, but it, he went to hand off something, and it was nobody right. there, so. Yeah. Um, but he recognized the situation and uh, was able to get a couple positive, or a yard or two there. Second and about eight, a long eight for Walpole. Back to pass, looking, throwing, complete. Abdal Talak, pushing, oh, pushing. Oh, almost got in. Has to be like the one or two yard line. Right. Looks like, uh, uh, looks like it's at the one. Yeah, at the one. Pick up a 12 on that. Abdal Kalak is really hard to cover. And right. Kenzie puts it right on his hands and. Uh, what a nice little drive coming out here into in the third quarter using clock. And off two. Oh no, they got him. That was uh, Keys. Yeah, Keys on the carry again. Yeah, Hingham stepped up on that one. I don't think he got anything. Maybe yeah. uh, right back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Second and goal from the one. Mackenzie keeps it. Oh, he fumbled. But now he's there. Touchdown, Noah McKenzie. The ball was on the ground. I didn't know if he fumbled or not, but McKenzie with the sneak. Yep. And what a response coming out. Like I said, uh, coming out of the coming at the end of the second quarter, if they come out here and put a score on, I mean, I don't, you know, it's I see it'd be super difficult for Hingham to come back, despite right. the fact that their offense kind of found a groove on that one drive where they scored. Uh, but now that's, you know, they used half the quarter, number one. They did, yeah. And number two, to put a touch, they haven't been stopped yet. They haven't punt, punted. So uh, just an impressive drive. Great job to the offensive line. Great job to the running backs. And Foynes makes it 33. Gets the extra point. So Walpole's lead now is 33 to 7. Just about six and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. You know, both the end of the second quarter and the beginning of this quarter have turned out exactly as, you know, as, as best as possible for Walpole.
They used clock. They got they got a penalty at the end of the second quarter to extend a drive. They used clock. They got the field goal on the board. They were coming out with the ball in the third quarter. Right. In the third quarter, they just decided to go to the running game. And, uh, again, the O-line that, that has really come on every game, gotten better and better and better. With down three starters from the beginning of the year. There's a kick to St. Pierre. Gets it up, cuts it up, gets it up to about the 30, 31. Yeah, that's Shamoon on that tackle. Pretty good return, though, for Hingham. Yeah. Okay, we just got word that Abdal Kalak might have been hurt on that touchdown play. And or maybe on the receiving play being, before that, yeah, when he got tackled. Yeah, he's being attended to on the other sideline. All right, first and ten for Hingham. I don't see much reason to play him anymore if it's not that serious, but. Being chased oh, by Beatty. And brought down. Aiden Abatey having a really good year. A loss of two, three on that play. Yeah, Verhollick's done a really good job getting rid of the ball, moving in the pocket. They designed some things for him to roll out, but uh, Beatty caught him that time. Beatty wasn't going to let him go. Right. McCabe and Frederick still in the middle at defensive tackle. I see Marco O'Brien, number 53, at right defensive end. Inside handoff. And Nothing. It gets, does, I don't think it got back to the line of scrimmage. He might have got to the 30. Yeah, so Calvin McCabe with the tackle. Kearns is coming back in now for, well, I see two D linemen coming out. Oh, because Hughes is coming in as well as Kern. So Hughes is like a third down rush guy, I think. Actually, the no gain on that play. It'll be third and about 13. Shamoon, Reynard, Cesario still playing linebacker. Cantrell, I see Kalak out at uh, left corner, so he's oh, yeah. probably okay. Oh, that's good. Little rollout. Firing complete. And down at about the 34, maybe the 35, to Jack Nichols. Nicholas. Yeah, that play wasn't a play that was designed to get a 14-yard gain. I mean, a little rollout. He wasn't going to get to the first down marker, maybe after the catch, but right. Ruffle had tight coverage and uh, was able to secure the tackle. Yeah, Doc Kalak back to return the punt, so that's good uh, news. Good, yeah. Doing the punting is uh, Gunnar Corey. Oh, a little high snap again. Uh, high punt. Takes a hang and bounce. Oh, Jamal <laughs> thought about it for a minute. He always does. Yeah. <laughs> he wants to pick up every one. Uh, uh, looks like it goes out at about the 25 yard line. Yeah, and that's good, where Walpole will take over. Good discipline by him not to do that. It was just wasn't the right time to pick that ball up. Right. So. Yeah, he had two two defenders right there with him. Let's see if Walpole sticks with that running game. Keys, Dehar, uh, Dehar um, McKenzie has been contributing tonight in the running game. And let's just not forget Patrick Webb, too. He hasn't run right. the ball, but he's been in, uh, in there as the blocking back. He's nothing there. Yeah. Gets nothing on that. Second and ten for Walpole. Uh, they're going to give him a yard on that. Okay. Second and nine. Third quarter going by pretty fast. Kenzie back to pass, looking down the right side. Over Kalak. the middle, complete to Abdal Kalak. He's got it, reverses, and is pushed out of bounds at about the Walpole 48. 
pickup of 22. Yeah, Kal Abdel Kalak lined up in the slot, just a, like a 15-yard in cut, and uh, McKenzie was patient. He had great uh, protection, as usual. He's been getting great protection all year, and he threw a strike uh, as Kal Abdel Kalak was going across the field, and 22-yard uh, gain, first down, kept I don't, I don't think the clock's been moving because he went out of bounds. But right. Just over three minutes to go in the third quarter. Mackenzie rolling to his right. Sets fires. Oh, complete nice. Complete the cues at about the 37 or 38. Uh, they're going to mark it at the 41. Yeah, a little rollout that time. I mean, I've seen Walpo High do that this year a little bit, but McKenzie's usually in the pocket when he throws. But a little rollout gives himself some space. The couple passes they've tried to get to Hughes tonight have been downfield long, but that was a that was like a 12 or 13 yard out, and uh, got another first down here. Hand off to Keys. Keys stutter steps and. Gets it down inside the 40 to about the 36. Pick up a five. Offensive line, Joe Malone at right tackle. Kearns at right guard. Chris Gillis at center. Reynard at left guard. Peter Fallen, a left tackle, doing a great job tonight. Back to pass again as McKenzie going got down him. the left sideline. He's got him wide open. Touchdown. That's huge. They've been going. They've tried that yeah. twice, and then he got free, and uh, McKenzie hits him on the run. Just a great little pass. Good job. Good feel. Good for Hughes. He's uh, uh, 36 yards. He's a great. I don't even know if, what to call him. A second, third. They they have Abdul Kalak. They've got keys and. I don't know if he's third or fourth threat in that offense, but right. uh, they've got a lot of them. How many yards on that pass? 36. 36. And by the way, McKenzie wasn't close to being touched again. He's, since early in the year, I mean, he's had plenty of time to fire the ball. Right. <laughs> Nick Foynes looking to make it 40 to 7. Oh, I see a flag. Looks like a procedure in Walpole. Yeah, it'll move it back five yards for the extra point. <coughs> Walpole will try once again. That's oh, nothing to Legatron. Point. It's like a challenge to Legatron. It is. Call another offside. I'll even kick a deeper one. Well, he does have five field goals this year, too. So, well, Walpole's making a statement tonight. Like, I mean, obviously they're probably, right. you know, people probably thought they were favored, but uh, right now they're putting a pretty good uh, shellacking on Hingham. They are. And we've lost to Hingham two times in the two last couple of years. Yep. So, yep. one night in like a minus 20, remember uh -huh. we were standing on top of the booth there, it was crazy. I was Ooh, off to the side. Oh, You're no, good. I was yeah. talking him up. I was talking him up. Yeah. Legatron, what happened? Anyway, so Walpole's lead is now 39-7 to seven with 2 minutes and 16 seconds left in the third quarter. I know you've had a – you say you, you always talk about a Thanksgiving Day game in Weymouth where you mm -hmm. were freezing, but that Hingham game when we were on top of the booth, right. it had to be like minus 15 oh. out. It was the absolutely brutal. The wind was wicked. <laughs> <laughs> and oh. we lost, so that made it even worse. Yes, a long ride home. Oh, yeah, that was terrible, terrible. Uh, yeah. I, I had so many layers on it, it wasn't enough. Oh, no, night. I know. You couldn't stay warm. Yeah. And the, the sad part was that the wide open press box that we weren't <laughs> allowed in right. was nice and toasty warm. <laughs> but we're getting our revenge tonight. Foynes' is kick on the way. Comes to St. Pierre at the 10. 15, 20, going over, gets up to about the 25, maybe the 26. And that's where Hingham will take over. 
I think Dylan Needham and uh, Anthony Shamoon were in on that tackle. Jake Gauntham in as well. Jake's been in on a few tonight. Shamoon on the kickoff, but many more on defense. Dylan Needham, a sophomore. We saw him uh, last week a few times running the ball, but it's uh, the, the, the second back tonight has been Johnny Dare, and he's been having a great night too. Right. Oh! oh. <laughs> and he's brought down. Back at about the 21. Oh, there he is. Michael Frederick, the captain, returning tonight after being out most of the whole year. I tell you, once he didn't, once, uh, once Verhollick didn't have his first read, uh, he was in trouble. Yep. So, and he tried to escape, but uh, the, the pressure came from inside. McCabe, Frederick, good for Frederick getting back on the field tonight. I'm sure he feels tremendous about that. Right. Um, you know, it's tough being hurt your senior year. You're a captain. So, good for him. A loss of about two and a half, three on the play. Second down for Hingham. Oh, Mahalik's wasn't there again. Now he's going to pass. He's looking, and he's going to be nailed. There's Mike Frederick again, I think. Down. Yeah. Yeah. Boy. Michael Frederick. Is going to be marked at the 18. Yeah, so some six. The difference this half so far has been Walpole's been able to get some pressure on the, on Vaharlik. So, right. but both times that there was a sack, the first look wasn't there. Right. And it forced him to kind of bring the ball down and and uh, uh, either take off a little bit, looking for another opening, or you know, looking to run. But like I said, I you know, 39 to seven, it's hard right. to say positive things about the seven team but I thought for Halleck has done a nice job on, uh, on some of the drives right sophomore right. so uh, you know I don't know if we we don't see them until it's the playoffs hang on usually but yeah. we'll be looking forward to seeing what he does over the next few years for the Harvardmen fifty five seconds left in this third quarter third and about uh, about 17, 18, maybe. Hand off to St. Pierre, he gets up over the 20 to about the 21, maybe 22. And yeah, so the market on the 22. Kind of an interesting call. I mean, maybe they were thinking they had a, a Walpole uh, in the wrong defense there with the little draw play. Um, but yeah, I thought they would probably try to go downfield a little bit on that one. Shamoon with the tackle. Forces the punt. Yep. Is that and Abdel out. Kalak? I don't think that's. A, is that him back there? Yeah. It is it? Yeah. yeah. And it is. We'll be down on the wall pole 48. And that's where the Timberwolves will take over. Uh, you know, to start the fourth quarter. Uh, I don't want to get anybody in trouble, but there looked like there was two seconds left on the clock when the whistle was blown, and all of a sudden I saw the <laughs> clock stop, and then it ran like the last two seconds. So I don't know if that uh, that should have happened, but yeah. But here we go. If it was a 14 to 13 game, probably Hingham right. would have had a yeah. All right, they will. <clears throat> And I feel like it's going to be running time now because of the score. So yeah, I don't know if they do that in the playoffs or not. But yeah, they didn't. Well, the last week they did, but it wasn't yeah, the playoffs. Yeah, wasn't the game. playoffs, right? Well, we'll see quickly here, right? So we'll also hmm. see. Uh, I would expect Walpole would have their starting O maybe for the first set of downs here. Mm -hmm. But if they make a first down, they might try to get some kids in. We'll yeah. see. Yeah. Yeah. 
keeping him out there. Walpole still on the sidelines. Now they're coming out. <clears throat> and we'll see here quickly whether it's running time. Johnny Dare is going to line up at running back. And uh, Dylan Needham, the sophomore too, looks like he's back there. He had a couple nice runs last week. That's about five there. I didn't, who carried it? Johnny Dare. Dare, okay. Down to the, into. Yeah, Hingham definitely over, two, over 200 yards rushing for Walpole. I got, you know, we might be off. We we're always off right. by a couple yards. But I got Keys at 118, Johnny Dare 62, McKenzie 29. So that's 92 plus one. That's a two, 210 yards rushing. Yeah. Right. I got McKenzie at 185 passing yards, mm -hmm. so uh, almost 400 yards of offense here tonight for Walpole, but impressive. The rushing numbers are impressive. Very, yeah. The Hingham guy's offside here, the cornerback. You see him? Yeah. A little McKenzie rollout. Roll into his right, looking fine. Wow, what a bullet. What a, to Abdal Kalak what a bullet. To the 35. That's a 14-yard gain. Was that Abdal Kalak? Will Mc no, I think it was Will McGrath. Really? Number four, yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry about that, Will. That is to the 35. Pick up of 13 on that. Another set of downs for Walpole. <coughs> And that's the sophomore, Dylan Needham, right there. Oh, he's impressive. Yeah. Still on the move. Going, going. He's gone. Wow. Dylan Needham. I thought he had some nice runs yeah. last week, and that was a very nice run. Boy, to have another, develop another weapon there. Dylan right. Needham, number 14, 40, what, 40? That will be uh, 35. 35-yard 35 run. Woo. Nice burst, broke a few tackles. Of course, right. he had a hole. Got to give credit to the line, too. Oh, but, yeah. boy, he made a nice run. After he broke the one or two tackles there, he just he just beat the uh, deep safety to the corner, to the to the uh, pylon. Yeah, clock's running. Yeah, the clock is running. Nick Foynes getting ready for the extra point. This kick is up. And good. And Walpole's lead is now 46 to 7. So Walpole, as you said before, lining up to play the winner of Mansfield versus Westboro. Boy, Mansfield, yeah. they dropped down from Division Two this year right. to Division Three. So yeah. I mean, it's based on enrollment. So I don't, yeah, you know, I don't know. That's how it works. Although, interestingly enough, there's only 22 teams in Division Two, I believe. Oh. I think there's like 30 plus in Division Three. Yeah, Division Three is big. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Walpole is the fourth smallest Division Three school. Fourth smallest Division Three school. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Hanover last year was three. They went down to five. Oh. So one of the things coming into this game tonight, I was like, well, Hingham's three and five, but they play in a pretty tough league. Like right. du Duxbury's the number one seed in Division Four. Hanover's the number one seed in Division Five. Plymouth South's in the playoffs. Yep. They're in Division Three. They play Barica tonight. Ooh, a shot kick. Uh oh, still going, man. Gets up to the 45-yard line. That was St. Pierre. Well, Hingham will take over on their 45. Running time now because of the 39-point lead at the 7:40. And counting. Let's see if I can get some of these subs that are coming in. 81, Joe Norse. I see him in. There's a handoff. Oh, oh what a tackle what a again. Yeah. 
That's Reynard again. He, that's, he's made like three or four of those right. just like that. Yeah, no gain on the play. <laughs> he, he must make at least 10 or 12 tackles a game. I uh, see number 78 in there as well, Kale Soto Briard, senior at right end. Now they're subbing in here. Number 24, Michael Pileski Jr. Number 26, Junior Jack English. Patrick Webb is 21, getting 21. Quinn McNeil is out there. Yep, he's been. Uh, yeah, he's he was a starter. Ah, uh, Marco no O'Brien. Marco O'Brien's done a nice job. He's been subbing in with the starters, uh, giving guys breaks. So he's a senior. I think he's done a really nice job. He's made a bunch of plays this last couple of weeks. Uh, awesome Dylan, six on that Dylan play. Dylan Needham with the great touchdown run just came in for his brother, Kevin. Number 20, Pedro DeMeo, senior. Uh, 35 just came in, Joe Cotter. Sophomore. Going Got him. That is uh, Ryan St. Croix. Yeah, a lot of subs coming in. Probably weren't running against the, you know, they were being a scout team, but probably weren't running against the, the Hingham, you know, as they practiced the Hingham offense this week. But, uh, yeah, good play again by the sophomore quarterback. He right. rolled out, found the guy, found his receiver deep, and, uh, I don't know. Maybe there was confusion on coverage, but he was a good five or six yards behind right, right. the last Walpole defender. So I think I'm going for two points here and getting it. Yep, that's 16, the sophomore. Sophomore uh, captain, by the way. He Chase went out. Well, he went out for the captain's coin toss. Right. Uh, Chase Bailey. So that makes the score of Walpole 46 and Hingham 15 with 444 and counting left in this one. <coughs> yeah, so we have the Mansfield Westboro matchup that'll be here at here Walpole, Walpole High. Next Friday, probably at 6 o'clock again, just like tonight. We'll see if they try another run side kick. Yeah, they do Harry have a lot of players Bradshaw. up for sure. Right. Harry Bradshaw kicking for Hingham. Is that Kevin Needham? Needham? Yeah. yeah. He gets to the 22, 23 it looks like of Walpole. Yeah, wholesale changes coming in. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I see Jake Gonham in number nine getting in. Number 29, uh, oh, he ran the ball last week a few times. So, Braden Matera. Oh, yeah. Number 68, Joe Martin, Jr. Uh, it looks like Hingham <laughs> takes a timeout. Okay. With 3.07 Maybe, to go. Uh, it wasn't Hingham? Did you see it was Hingham? They put it. I think they uh, pointed Walpole to seemed Hingham, pretty yeah. confused on right, yeah, trying mean, to I, get guys in. I like <laughs> seeing kids running I out. I thought maybe <laughs> uh, they, they took the timeout to kind of get their lineup straight. Right. Yeah, I was looking at the Division II um, MIA power rankings. At one point, like you have to have a minimum of three wins to make right. the tournament. But at one point, 
you know, with only 22 teams and 16 teams making it, yeah, the, uh, there was a chance that there was a team that were two wins was going to make it out of Division Two. But yeah. like I said, there's a lot more teams in Division Three, yep. and it just gets actually bigger and bigger as the divisions get smaller and smaller. Right. I feel like there's like in Division Eight, there's like 45, 46 teams. Can't believe there's 48 eight divisions. And off to. That's Matera. Raiden Matera. Yep. Pick up of about. It's up to the 30 yard line. Seven. Michelle. Yep. Danny so Murphy. Danny Murphy at quarterback, yeah. Two minutes in running. Really impressive start to the playoffs here for Walpole, but honestly, it's been a continuation of what we've seen the last five weeks. Just a really explosive offense. Right. 30, 40 points a game. Yeah, they <laughs> they're not having any trouble scoring, that's for sure. <clears throat> Hand up there. Taylor again picks up uh, maybe t to the 31. Pick up of one, and it'll bring up a fourth down for Walpole and about two to go. Under a minute to play. Walpole improves to six and three. You know, I saw uh, Reynard in there, and I was like, what the heck is he doing in the game at this point? I mean, but they're punting. So they have a specific punt team here. Right. First punt of the game. It is, yeah. Timeout call by so, Walpole, it looks like. I don't know if it was a timeout or delay game, but the clock's just uh, going to run out game, here. Yeah. The clock's just going to run out. like. Right. <laughs> so they never even really had to punt it. Yeah. <laughs> and All they right. don't. And that will end it for this opening round of the Division Three playoffs. Walpole cruises to a 46-15 victory here. We heard that blue thunder rumbling across the field rebelling against the Harbormen. And Walpole advances to the second round, the quarterfinals, I think, is what this next one will be, the quarterfinals. Yep. Yep. A decisive victory for the Timberwolves. Logan Keyes, two touchdowns. John Dayer, a touchdown. Uh, Nick Foynes, one, two, three, four, five, five extra points and a field goal. Uh, Noel McKenzie, a touchdown. Kamari Hughes a touchdown and uh, uh, Dylan Needham to, to close it out for Walpole with a touchdown. So your Walpole Timberwolves are advancing to the next round here with a very uh, look at us victory here. Convincing, convincing victory. So, uh, you know, they're just starting to get some recognition in some of the local uh, publications. You know, people are seeing what they're doing to opponents. Their offense has been explosive. The defense has been solid. Um, really looking forward to next week, especially if it's Mansfield. That's going to be a heck of a game. Right, yeah. Well, we would like to thank you for watching this Walpole Media Corporation broadcast of Walpole High School varsity football action. Once again, your final score in the first round of the Division Three playoffs, Walpole 46. 
Hingham 15.